This is the California condor. This condor is today the largest flying bird in North America. It's really only found in California, Arizona, and Baja California in Mexico. While these are the only places where wild condors can be found, their range used to be larger. In ancient times, specifically the Pleistocene, condors were found all throughout the United States from east to west. However, as larger mammals like mammoths and other large megafauna began going to go extinct, the condor population began to shrink just a little bit. Eventually, by the time the first European settlers arrived, the condor population was reduced to the west of the Rocky Mountains from British Columbia to Baja California. However, with the arrival of Europeans, the condors would begin to deteriorate in their population. Due to their use of lead bullets, habitat loss, and overhunting of their natural prey, the condor population began to shrink faster than it did in ancient times. It would only take about 100 years before the California condor was reduced to Southern California. Then in the 1900s, farms, farms began to introduce a pesticide known as DDT. DDT was used on farms to remove pests, but it was determined to be really bad for birds across the country, including the condor. Eventually, by the time DDT was banned, the California condor only had a population of 50, and by 1979 there were only 25 condors left in the wild. To prevent their extinction, conservationists captured all the condors in the wild and eventually began a breeding program for the condors. During their absence, the California condor was replaced with their relatives, the Andean condor, to test reintroduction techniques. Finally, in 1992, two California condors were released in Ventura County, and from 1992 to 2003, more and more condors would be released into California, Arizona, and Baja California. Today, the population of California condors stands at about 370 condors in the wild and 571 condors in captivity. However, while this is a major success in terms of conservation, they still haven't really returned to all of their range. The condors are still reduced to only two states in the United States, which is still nowhere near their size prior to the Europeans. However, there have been attempts to expand their population. In March of 2022, California condors were released into Redwood National Park, making it the first time that the condors were released this far north. This brought many questions about where the condor should be released next, and I think the answer is pretty clear actually. I believe, in my own opinion, the California condor should be released more farther north than what it was in Redwoods. In 1897, Washington State would lose the California condor after the last sighting of the bird was made that year. Just seven years later, in 1904, Oregon would also lose the California condor. Since then, the Pacific Northwest has never had another sighting of the California condor in the region. However, the introduction of these birds in Northern California could mean that the California condor could be reintroduced into the Pacific Northwest, which would greatly help the environment of the area. To start, they are scavengers. This means that they will only eat dead bodies for a living. As a result, they not only remove unwanted dead animals from different locations, but they will also re remove deadly bacteria admitted by the bodies of the dead animals. The way condors prevent bacteria from infecting them is through their stomach. A condor's stomach acid is strong enough to disintegrate bacteria, which allows them to feed off of rotting flesh. They also assist in the spread of nutrition for plants since condors assist in breaking down dead bodies quicker due to them tearing off flesh and leaving bones which act as fertilizer for plants. The way condors feed off of dead bodies would greatly assist the Pacific Northwest. However, the question of where these animals would live is a mystery. So let's go over some places where the California condor could be reintroduced into the Pacific Northwest. The first area condors could live in is the Channeled Scablands. This area is located in South Central Washington and is a unique geological formation created by a flood that ravaged the area thousands of years ago. This resulted in the formation of tall cliffs that towered over the land. Condors today have a liking for cliffs since they build nests on top of cliffs to protect their hatchlings. Not only that, but the last sighting of the condor in Washington was made near this region, which could prove that they were able to survive in this area for many years. The next area would be the Columbia River Gorge. The Columbia River Gorge, similarly to the Channel Scablands, was also formed by the floods that took place thousands of years ago which widened the river valley and formed the gorge. This area is very towering and has its fair share of cliffs which the California condor could live in. 
They would also be closer to the ocean, which these condors have a liking to since many are found near the coast of California today. The next would be Olympic National Park. Olympic would be a safer place for the condors since they would be even more protected by the national park. In Olympic, they could thrive near the Olympic Mountains where they would have the access to the coast nearby and have the privilege of being isolated from the rest of the state since the peninsula is situated farther away from human life. The condors would also help with feeding on dead animals like elk, mountain goats, and even seals and whales. The last place where I think condors could be reintroduced is in coastal Oregon. Oregon's coast is equipped with tall cliffs and rugged terrain, which would be perfect for condors. The highest peak, Humbug Mountain, is about 1,700 feet tall and would be the perfect location for condors. However, Oregon's coast is fairly occupied by people and the environment around the area is still somewhat damaged due to the littering of trash in the area, as well as deforestation which would not help in the reintroduction of the condor. So I want to add one last location of possible reintroduction sites for um, the California condor. The British Columbian coastal range would be perfect for the condors as well since some parts of the range have been untouched by humans. However, they would probably not survive in the northern parts of the range and would only be able to survive in the southern parts due to the cold. But other than that, the environment of the mountains would be perfect for the condors, at least in my opinion. With that said, I think it could be possible to reintroduce the California condor into the Pacific Northwest. The process would take time, however, due to the fact that the condors have major requirements for their environments, which could hold back their reintroduction. But with the right restoration and the right protection, we could see the California condors soar in the skies of the Pacific Northwest once again. Hopefully.